You want to starve you out, basically. 502-276-2118. Taking your calls, WBKI Legal Line with Carl Truman. Um, I was going to ask you, if just regarding her question, the short-term disability. Now, for most employers, does that apply to part-time workers as well, or it, does it vary? It just depends on the company. Okay. Some companies no have really good benefits that. and provide coverage, and some don't have it okay. at all. I mean, it just depends on the company. Okay. You know, we haven't had a chance to talk with you about health care in recent weeks. It looks like now that maybe the Republicans and Democrats this week are going to get together. I mean... I go on the blogs, I watch some of the talk shows, I listen to radio, I'm not hearing, I talk to everyday people, I'm not hearing a ton of people saying, I gotta have new health care, I gotta have new health care. I, I think everybody needs health care, but <clears throat> what are you, what's your latest take on this? I know the Republicans want tort reform, mm -hmm. I know the Democrats want uh, health insurance for the, for the poor and those who can't, uninsured. Right. Is there a common ground out there that you see with all this? It seems like there's a lot of political well, posturing. Well, there's a couple issues that, that are important to me, you know, because from what I see on a day-to-day -day aspect is, well, first of all, I see people every day that don't have health insurance, and they get hurt, and they can't pay their bills, and they run up huge, you know, hospital bills and doctor bills, and uh, they have, you know, no way to pay them. The other issue that I just heard on the news this morning is that now the president is to try to get something done. You know, now he's entertaining the, the Republican targeting, trying to limit your ability to recover for medical malpractice. I don't like the word tort reform. You know, that, that you know, reform always sounds like something, a positive spin. This is not a positive spin. You know, when you, everybody thinks it's not going to happen to me. You know, I'm not going to be the one to be a victim of a medical mistake or my family or my children. But when you talk about that and you say, well, yes, you know, we need, we need you know, me malpractice reform, what you're really saying is that my spouse, my child is not, is, is not worth uh, full compensation. Mm -hmm. You know, think of it in the terms of it happening to you and your spouse, your child. That, you know, if you're willing to sign a waiver saying, if my doctor, you know, operates on my spouse or, you know, my husband, my wife, or my child, then I'm giving them a free pass. You know, so, so think of it in that perspective, not in some obscure. Nobody comes to see me thinking, yeah, I was pretty much planning on being, a, a, you know, hurt in an mm -hmm. accident or a medical mistake. Everybody thought, well, no, I'm a safe driver. I'm, I'm not, it's not going to happen right. to me. You know, well, so, so think about it, that what if it does happen to you? Well, we're, we're taking prepared. your phone calls, 502-276-2118. <laughs> Call Truman on the WBKI legal line. We have some emails. Kale in Louisville has sent us an email. We want to read this on this morning. Kale in Louisville. That's right. And Kale writes this and says, Mr. Truman mentioned there was a time limit to file for workers' compensation. Can mm -hmm. he explain that again? I was hurt on the job in October of 2007. I've had a lingering pain in my ankle, thought it would go away. Any help would be appreciated. That's Kale in Louisville. Yeah, time limits are a very important thing to be aware of uh, in any type of injury situation. And they're not always black and white. You can't just give one standard answer and say, well, in every case, this is the, this is the deadline. Mm -hmm. But in the workers' compensation, as a general rule, uh, the time would be two years from the last date of compensation benefits, meaning like if you're off work and you're awarded temporary total TTD, temporary total disability benefits, then that, once they stop those weekly benefits, then that would start the clock for the two-year time limit to actually file what's called an application for adjustment of claim. So in her situation, it would depend, did she receive TTD benefits or didn't she? Because then that could affect when that clock started. Okay. And I believe we have another uh, caller on the line. We have Darlene in Louisville with a question for Carl. Darlene? Yes. Hi there. Good morning, Darlene. How are you all today? Good. How are well, you? I'm fine. Uh-huh. Listen, um, I've been having a uh, problem for some time about uh, the Louisville Metro government uh, housing uh, development. Yeah. They had a private entity at New Directors House Club. It's called NDAC. And they renovated my home uh, in 2007. Right. And I filed a complaint about the problems that have occurred, but I haven't received the results. Okay, darling, I know, just to set the, some, some yeah, history there, I know the, the, the housing uh, in Louisville, there's been some uh, disruption, there's been some concern, questions raised, and I know they've even, I, I think, uh, one of the past directors or a past official there has either been removed or put on a different job, or there's been some questions raised. So you may want to take what I know and what I've read online, take your complaint 
back through the process, but what do you do when you're waiting for so long for any type of complaint and, and, and it falls on deaf ears or not fast enough? Well, I'm not familiar with the housing authority personally. I mean, uh, you know, that's not really something that I deal with regularly. So uh, I don't know who, what the, the appeal process would be, but certainly any time you deal with any entity like that, you want to keep a, a, a journal or a record of your complaints, you know, whether if you talk to someone, keep a notation of the date and time and who you talk to, you know, because one of the things I, you know, my response when I hear someone say, well, they said, my response is, who is they? You know, so you got to keep a, a log of who you talk to and when and, and what was said. And if you send letters, keep copies, you know, so you can keep a paper trail of all of your problems, you know, so you can take it up to whoever the next level is to, to try to get some action okay. done. Yeah, and Darlene, I, would, I think I, you may want to call 311 or even call the mayor's office because I know there's been some disruption in the public housing because of some alleged or potential irregularity so don't be afraid right. as Carl has said before to ask questions and seek information and that was going to be my other suggestion yeah. called mayor's office yeah. too okay and we are again taking your phone calls give us a call if you have a question for Carl 276-2118 we've got a caller on the line Sean in Louisville Sean are you there uh, yes I am hi Sean Good go ahead with your question I guess my grandpa passed away about four or five years ago, and he left a credit card with a balance of about seven or eight thousand um, dollars. My grandmother doesn't have any way to pay this, but, and all she gets is Social Security, and that's all she lives on. Mm -hmm. um, as of this month, they garnished her whole month worth of Social Security. Mm -hmm. My question is, can they do that, or? Is there something that she can do to try to stop them from yeah. keep going? Yes. Right, and that, that's a, a horrible situation to be in. But the first question that you've got to look at is, did she sign on the application for the card? Was she uh, an, an authorized user? Did she use the card? Was she on the, the uh, account? Was she an account holder? Because if her name was not on the account, you can't hold, hold a yeah. wife responsible right. for the husband's debts just because they're married. It, does, it, it doesn't work that way. So what you need to look at is look up the account and find out was she an account holder? Did she sign the application as uh, an account holder to be responsible for the debt? If she did not, then they can't just go after her to collect her husband's debt. You know, if he had an estate, then they could make a claim against the estate. But she's not automatically responsible for her husband's debt just because they're married. Carl, question though, if, if, um, if, if the house, let's say they're not living in a house that they own and there's no money, is bankruptcy an option in this to get this debt away because it's a deceased? But, well, but again, it depends, is, she, is, it, is it her debt? Okay. Uh, you know, if, if it's not her debt, there's no reason for her to bankrupt somebody right. else's debt. And if uh, to, to garnish an account, mm. they first had to ha have to file a lawsuit. They have to have, would have had yeah. to have sued her, gotten a judgment. You know, now sometimes people get sued and they don't respond, even if it's not a right, you know, correct. And they, then they get a judgment. And then they, once okay. they get a judgment, then they can they garnish the account. Well, okay. one thing you might want to do, Sean, is uh, confidentially email Carl at his law office with more information. That might be a way help and maybe he could help you but we appreciate you being with us Carl we're out of time Thank we'll you see you next here. week